Hey there, Business 100 class, your friendly neighborhood, Professor Roberts here. Okay, so we've got a couple of lectures in the books. Um, the feedback I got last time was that the sound was a little off uh, or spotty sometimes. So I'm trying these out today uh, to see if that will help uh, with the sound quality. So we'll see. Chapter three. Uh, let's fire up chapter three here. Let's get it started. So chapter three, the world marketplace. Here we go. All right. So here we're talking about business without borders, meaning how do we do business globally? Um, and if chapter two and more specifically, the, oh, see, I didn't share my screen, did I? Look at that. You just saw nothing. <laughs> Let's try that again, shall we? Okay, boom. And boom, there we go, all right. Professor Roberts, knocking it out of the park. Okay, so we're talking about the world marketplace where specifically we're talking about um, doing business in a global economy. And if nothing, I think what the documentary you guys watched last week, Inside Job, uh, definitely demonstrated how our economy is so interdependent with the rest of the world's economy. Uh, we all thrive on when everyone else is thriving. Um, there is definitely a symbiotic relationship there or a shared relationship between all the different economies in the world. And so this chapter talks a little bit more about the international marketplace. Okay. So taking a look at our learning outcomes, we want to take a look at the business opportunities in the world economy, the key reasons for international trade, and the tools for measuring international trade. We're gonna take a look at strategies for reaching global markets, barriers to international trade and strategies to surmount them. And we're gonna take a look at the free trade movement and discuss key benefits and criticisms of international trade. So, access to technology is on the rise. And at the same time, barriers to trade seem to be decreasing. As a result, the different economies around the world are becoming more interdependent than ever before. This has created a tightly woven global economy marked by intense competition and huge shifting opportunities. Many recent studies, many recent studies have found that when the percentage of the population with cell phones goes up, that the entire, uh, the entire economy benefits. So BRIC, the BRIC countries, Brazil, Russia, India, and China, deserve attention because of their large populations, rapid development, and the robust middle class growth rates. Vietnam, the Philippines, um, Bangladesh, they're all benefiting from the migration of labor intensive, low wage manufacturing jobs away from China. As more jobs are created, such locations will likely begin to develop robust middle classes and stabilize economies. And a number of the sub-Saharan African countries and nations, such as Nigeria, Kenya, um, and Angola, also provide an enormous opportunity for economic growth. So companies usually think of uh, expanding into global markets when they realize that there is a new unexplored and growing market to be exploited. But there are other benefits too. International trade, for example, is an advantageous to firms that want to capitalize on factors of production that are not present in the amount, uh, in the right amount at the right price in a particular country. Global trade helps reduce moderate dependence on one economy. This reduces the economics for multinational companies. 
And then international trade promotes innovation and is an invaluable source of new ideas. Let me go back. I think we got some slides mixed up here. So when we talk about um, absolute advantage and comparative advantage, we want to take a look at when a country produces more of a particular commodity, it has to produce less of another commodity simply because of the available resources that are ultimately limited. So the value of the product that a country gives up to produce its best product is known as an opportunity cost. A country has an absolute advantage when it can produce more of a good than other nations using the same amount of resources. Although having an absolute advantage is beneficial to most countries, it isn't always enough. Back on track. So, balance of trade determines if a country has a trade deficit or a trade surplus, and it takes into consideration the value of goods as well as services. The balance of trade determines the balance of payment. A balance of payment also considers financial flows such as foreign borrowing and lending, foreign aid payments and receipts. The exchange rate of a given currency must be expressed in terms of another currency. We see that a lot of times uh, when we compare the US dollar to the yen, the Japanese yen, or the euro. Um, companies indulge in counter trading when customers don't have access to hard currency or credit. This situation is more common in developing countries. If done well, counter trading can be a powerful tool for companies to gain customers and products that would otherwise be unavailable. So the balance of trade determines the balance of payment. Balance of payment also considers financial flows, such as foreign borrowing and lending, as well as the foreign aid payments and receipts. The exchange rate of a given currency should be expressed in terms of another currency, as we mentioned before, and we talk about those exchange rates in relation to the trading and counter trading. All right, so some of the strategy for reaching global markets. Although foreign outsourcing reduces costs, the risks, in, the risks involved with foreign outsourcing can be high. Quality control and social responsibility could be uh, some of the possible risks involved with foreign outsourcing. Imported products don't carry the name of the importer and the risks involved are low. Small and mid-sized companies aiming at the basic international market development choose exporting. Now, we're gonna pause in the slides here because I do want you to take a look at uh, another, this one's much shorter, short documentary. And it's about Nike and how they um, use exporting, uh, uh, specifically how they use foreign outsourcing, contracting with foreign suppliers to produce products in order to make their goods. Now, we all know Nike, right? It's the swoosh, just do it, right? They have fantastic marketing department, probably the best this country, uh, you know, top five marketing that you, this country sees. Um, their ads are outstanding. Uh, most recently, the Colin Kaepernick ad last year or the year before, uh, it, you know, it made, it made, you know, waves and people were talking about it. Obviously, uh, for a little while, Colin Kaepernick was sort of a, a, a touch point, a sore point with some folks in this country. Um, looks like time has borne out that he was on the right path. So what we want to look at, though, is not the marketing, but exactly how does Nike carry out their business. So right now, we're going to pause our lecture. This is the sort of part one of your lecture. Part two of your lecture will take place after you've watched the documentary. The documentary is only about 20, 25 minutes, so it's not too long. Um, it is a little dated. It it's probably was shot back, uh, back when I was in college, so about 15, 20 years ago. Maybe a little longer. Um, but it's important because it touches on 
what some of those negative points are around foreign outsourcing. So you're gonna take a look at the documentary, it's called Behind the Swoosh. What I want you to do after you see the documentary is take a look at how Nike handles um, regulating or monitoring the conditions of their outsourcing partners now. Uh, just do a Google search. It doesn't have to be detailed. Shoot me a text, shoot me an email, send me a message through Canvas. Um, but tell me what you find out because I'm interested to see. Uh, on a side note, I got some good feedback from a few of you on the documentary last week. I'd love to see more feedback from folks just to know that A, you're watching these things, B, you're able to make the connection between what we're watching and what we're covering in the chapter. So without further ado, we're gonna end this recording and you're gonna click the link in the announcement for the Nike documentary behind the swoosh. See you guys soon.